Hi, um, welcome to my session. So today I um, actually deliver this session on behalf of Weiting, um, who cannot make the trip due to some reason. So today we are going to talk about uh, efficient uh, big data in OpenStack. So um, before we start, let's take a look on the agenda. Uh, at first, I will give us a, give you get a brief introduction on who we are, what we are doing this, and what's our motivation, and what's the current uh, um, big data in cloud landscape. And uh, after that, um, we will um, introduce our customer as a case study, which include their um, their skill, their environment, um, their private cloud and public cloud uh, um, skill, and uh, why they want to run big data in cloud, and what's uh, at last, we will show um, what's the problem, issues we encounter, and how, to, how do we fix that. It's kind of a, a BKM th um, for, for the people who want to run big data in their cloud environment. So let's go um, to the first part. So we are actually from Intel Software and uh, Service Group. <coughs> we focus on the big data technology. Uh, we do some research job in big data and the cloud um, solutions. So, um, we didn't have been contributing code to Open, OpenStack Sahara since Kilo. Um, we also contributed to other projects like uh, Cloudera and uh, other related projects. So what's our goal uh, from Intel's point of view is to help our customers to, big, to, um, to adopt the big data cloud solution and to use the Intel architecture more friendly. So um, the first question is, why people want to run big data in cloud? So we all know that big data is becoming a buzzword. It is, it is becoming more and more importantly. So it brings the possibility to analyze the data, um, collect, collect the data, store the data, analyze the data, and visualize the data, and transform it into real business values, and create, create, create a real revenue for the, for the company. The second thing is the, um, big data is really complex. It's, uh, it's a vast, complex ecosystem. Um, there are many, many different uh, requirements and a different unit scenarios in big data ecosystem. So um, to provide those many different uh, services, prob possibly it is typically in a company that uh, um, they have to build many different types of big data services. For example, they may use Hadoop, they may use Spark for memory data analytics, or they may use Hive or HBase. So, so that brings the last question, the ultimate question, so how to reduce the cost. So the cost is pretty expensive if they maintain two clusters, one is the big data cluster and the other one is the cloud cluster, which is pretty typical. For the big data thing, um, it plays like the analytic, analytic cluster for the, for the company, but for the cloud thing, it's more like uh, infrastructure. So typically for the two cluster, you have to um, maintain different types of hardware, um, and the cost is uh, it's pretty big. Um, and the second thing is uh, sometimes um, it's, it's pretty possible that uh, um, there, are, there are some over, um, over commission in some cases. So you, you will have to buy new, purchase new hardware and add to either of the cloud, cluster. So if, if, it, uh, if we can run big data in cloud, that would be um, reduce the cost dramatically. Um, but this is from the hardware point of view. But uh, let's take a look on the software. So if we can um, run big data in cloud, so we all know the cloud has provided f um, flexibility to, to rescale, the, um, to, um, to redesign the cluster, I mean to scale the cluster. So if we can do that on the management part, that would be a huge cost, a huge cost reduction. So um, to summary, um, when we run big data in cloud, we can um, satisfy the new requirements on demand request, and it, it should provide an easy to use solution and at a reduced cost. So let's see um, what current operations, um, what current operations for the big data on cloud. So we have uh, Amazon Elastic MapReduce, which provide a, a manageable Apache Hadoop um, framework on their EC2 instance. And you can also run Spark to interact with the data stored in the other data services like uh, Amazon S3 and uh, Dynamo database. So we also have HD Insight on a row. So it uh, consolidates the uh, um, Hadoop, um, Spark, RHBase, and uh, other services. So um, 
I personally, I like to take these two as the public cloud um, big data solution. But uh, we definitely we have Sahara, which can create a um, Hadoop Spark cluster automatically on open stack clusters. But we also have Cloudera, Director, and Hortonworks. So um, they kind of provide both cloud and uh, both public cloud and private cloud solution. So um, we already have those ones. And uh, never to mention um, that I, I, I don't mention like some other opposites like Blue Data. So we already have so many ones. So today, let's focus on um, how we support our one of our customer, um, helping them to run um, big data in cloud with Sahara. So um, the first and foremost thing when we trying to deploy um, big data in cloud is uh, what uh, items we should uh, take into consider it. So uh, we figured out that uh, typically we, and the most important thing is uh, which approach you, you want to go. Um, you want to go bare metal, virtual machine, or container. So when you deploy um, from the cluster deployment uh, point of view, uh, I mean the first layer, um, we, have, we have to figure out uh, which, which type of service, big data service, we want to deploy. For example, whether you want uh, Spark, whether you want to um, Hadoop, or some, uh, something else. But when you move that part into cloud, the better thing is when you need a new big data service, it's very easy to create a new cluster for that. Uh, it's compared with the traditional way. And the, the second thing is, the, most, uh, the second and the most important thing is on the compute engine part. So which thing do you care most? Do you care um, about most? So we all know that we started from virtual machine, um, which is providing the most, uh, uh, um, the better flexibility, but the performance uh, is the issue. So the second thing is bare metal. We have Ironic to support bare metal, um, but um, we do see a hard trend to on container part. So on storage part, so that's another question. So it's basically based on um, whether you want to store your big data, store, uh, big data um, storage part into object storage, block storage, or some other storage. So, so in this page, what I want to highlight the message is the most important thing is we want to think about uh, which approach we want to run, bare metal, virtual machine, or container. So each have its uh, um, pros and cons. But uh, for container today, I think it is still um, not mature yet. So let's go to the customer user case part. Um, uh, due to some, some um, time, the tight time schedule, we did not pass the uh, legal review, so um, I, we just removed the custom name here. So the custom is actually established in 1990. It's a large commercial enterprise in China. It's ranked like the top 500 enterprise in China. This business covers retail, logistics, supply chain, uh, real estate, and investment. So their, uh, their store, the custom store, they, they distribute in like 500 cities in China and uh, uh, have 180 uh, k employees. So uh, they have four R&D centers in Beijing, Shanghai, Nanjing, and uh, Silicon, even in Silicon Valley. Um, their brand value is over 13 million. This, talks, uh, this page tells us about uh, why they want to move to cloud, the motivation they want to move to OpenStack. So the traditional e-commerce company, e-commerce is becoming more and more popular in China. We have Alibaba, we have Jingdong, we have Taobao, and we have uh, several other online commercial companies. So several local, um, previously we call uh, retail, retail companies, they, they, they also want to move to that way. So that's why they want to uh, build cloud, um, bring cloud in their, their company. So this page is from, actually from the customer. What they think is, uh, if they bring cloud to their company, uh, it can help them to increase the efficiency, um, improve the collaboration, and the new business model. So um, the one thing they mentioned is, when they have a cloud running there, and they, when they have a big data running on top of the cloud, when they, they can do some, something like uh, analyze the customer's behavior. Um, how long you stayed on one single item, and uh, whether you purchase, or purchase that or not finally. So they hope that uh, through this kind of uh, cloudification movement, they can do some kind of uh, evol evolution or a revolution. So they will shift them from the traditional retailer to e-commercial e thing. The second thing is 
the, the physical cost, I mean the real estate cost in, in the big cities is really huge. So um, that's probably one thing why e commerce uh, like Alibaba is so hot in China. So they can, when they move more business from the physical um, retailer stores to the online store, they can save a lot of cost there. So um, this is the overview of their current cloud uh, clusters. They have two, two different types of cloud solution. One is the private cloud, and uh, the other one is the pro um, public cloud. For their private cloud, it's kind of like a multi-data center, which uh, um, runs one thorn host, um, 10 thorn virtual machine, which provided uh, the customer, rich customer middleware, and uh, for their automat uh, automated deployment uh, and operation. So for the public cloud solution, it's basically about cloud server, um, VPC, shared object storage, and a cloud database. Uh, also includes something like uh, faster de deployment and monitoring and billing. So let's take a look on their OpenStack journey. Um, they started very earlier, like in 2014, man. So they started from a single deployment and then uh, moved to multi-region deployment across different data centers. So um, the, it's a pretty typical, um, typical OpenStack adoption process what, uh, as what we observed in China. So most of the companies, they started with single deployment, uh, doing the testing work, uh, and then they, they trying to move that class into product, and then they start to contribute and using more and more components. So currently, they are KVM and Docker mixed. Um, it's a multi-layer application, including um, cluster application, standalone application, and an intelligent schedule with like 100 virtual machines per week. So they have touched uh, many, many domains in OpenStack, like uh, heat, um, heat. For heat, they use, um, at first they use to deploy their web cluster, then use it to deploy their application cluster and database cluster. Which, uh, currently, they are using it for auto-scaling. So they also um, used Sahara. So they use Sahara to enhance um, the Hadoop cluster, Spark cluster. They offload the data to object storage. So I will mention the, some details in the, in the later part. They use um, Sahara to schedule jobs and uh, to uh, schedule jobs, change jobs, and uh, do the uh, uh, monitoring administration work. Um, the, the, thing, the, other thing, the other thing I want to highlight is the job. So they actually provided a database as a service to their customer. So they use Chob MySQL as a service and Redis as a service. Um, on the Docker part, actually, the, this is only the item they put into the roadmap and all, the, all their plan. They do not actually use in, um, Docker at this moment. So for the Docker part, it's, uh, um, uh, their plan is to use it as a, conti a continuous uh, um, CI and a CD for the traditional assets. So um, the previous part is really about their environment, their um, needs and uh, what they have using in OpenStack. But this part tells about uh, their big, um, big data workload and environment. So um, this is based on the latest data. They, they probably have like 30K jobs per day. And uh, they are using Hadoop 2.41. Um, their data is using Swift interface and GlassTap as, as a storage backend. So on the workload pattern, um, they have a mixed CPU and our intensive workload. So the, the type of the job are so different that uh, they probably have like long, time, long time running jobs, but also like second level do jobs. So we will see the details later. This is CPU intensive um, hour long compile and build of a mobile application, searching then compilation, big data analytics, uh, and uh, some thumbnail generation. So they have, uh, they, they kind of like two, have two groups and each group have like 20 departments. Each, depart each department focuses on different uh, um, kind of uh, stuff. So maybe this de department needs have, another department needs need storm. So the, the requirement to their infrastructure team is pretty different. So that's the, that's the background why they want to um, run big data in cloud. So um, we help them to um, to kind of build, uh, uh, to deploy Sahara, to use Sahara de to deploy big data in the cloud. And we encountered many problems and uh, issues. So um, in the last part, I actually will set, um, share like seven problems um, and uh, solutions 
in the in this custom study case. So the first thing is uh, the first thing we heard from the customer is they complaining that sometimes it takes a long time to provision a cluster. So the reality is they have 30k jobs per day, but uh, it includes many different types of workload. So some jobs may be running in seconds, and uh, so it is not efficient if we run a second level um, job in a new cluster in minute. For example. Um, if we divided the, the entire job life cycle like this, we will have the instance boot time, we will have the cluster configuration time, and we will have the, the time for the big, big data workload to run. But uh, considering, for example, if we have a job that only sustains like three to five seconds, but we, uh, it should typ typically will take like three to five minutes to create a cluster. So in that case, um, it's not, almost not acceptable for them to to run the workload. So that's what we figure out is uh, when you're trying to use in Sahara to create the cluster, uh, you will have to shout about uh, how, um, how can we satisfy the workload need. For the small jobs, the better way is we, uh, looks like we, we can use a long run cluster um, for the small jobs. But for the large jobs, I mean, we dedicately, we pro pro probably use, we will have to use the customer size and optimize the cluster to reduce the time to run the big data workload. For example, we can, um, we can create a Spark cluster for some in-memory um, analytic workload, and uh, we can also try to schedule that cluster to uh, maybe a, a cluster with more powerful hardware. So this is the first problem. The second thing is, uh, uh, they have a real complex big data processing. So a job usually runs multi um, sub jobs and the customers uh, are using multiple big data services to run a job. For example, Hadoop for the batch jobs, Spark for real time and streaming jobs. So um, it turns out that uh, different departments have different requirements. Uh, what, what can you do if they are asking for different types of big data services? So I think we only have two ways. The first, the first thing is we run one single cluster that provided multiple big data services. Or we run multiple clusters for specific services or purposes. But if we combine this, this problem with the, the, the first one, so for example, if we have a small job cluster, and uh, then at that time we will have to provide a long run, um, long run cluster so in, in a long run cluster, it possibly we, we cannot uh, um, try, and, well, we cannot do the, the second uh, approach. For example, you run multiple clusters for a long run cluster. It will be um, kind of a waste uh, your resources. So it's a, it's a trade off. You have to think about, uh, um, based on the first, thing, the first uh, solution, I mean, to provide uh, the a long run or cluster or a customized, optimized cluster and then think about uh, whether we should run a single cluster with multiple data services or whether we should create uh, multiple cluster for, uh, clusters, each one running a different services. The third thing is uh, the storage choices. Um, here the problem that the currently most of the solutions is on storage part, we can run HDFS inside of the virtual machine. But the problem is uh, um, when the iteration down, when the um, the data will be lost. So you still have to position your data to, a, to an external storage. The second approach is we um, leverage an external HDFS, but we will lose the, the benefits of a locality and so, such kind of stuff. Um, we, we, another thing about the external HDFS solution is uh, um, people may have security concern because uh, um, the security, in, in this case, we, we will need the host and the instance, they both trust the HDFS, the storage part. So the last thing uh, we want to highlight is the Swift. We know there is a Swift FS project, which can uh, um, provide the EMI uh, with S3, its counterpart like that, like that solution. So in that case, you do not use HDFS at all. So this is exactly what our customer is using. They are using SwiftFS and uh, GlassFS as a storage part. So th basically, that's, that's why it's uh, what Amazon is doing. So this is a storage uh, um, considerations. So the solution is, uh, I think, uh, it depends. If, uh, 
If it's performance critical, possibly people will go to the internal HDFS, but uh, finally, the, this you have to persist in the data to an external storage. And if you want to um, provide services like uh, what Amazon is doing, possibly they will do the Swift approach. The fourth issue is uh, uh, when you're running big data in cloud, the most common thing is uh, on the external storage part is you typically will have to store the HDFS data over cloud storage. So what the customer asks most is, hey, in my, app, in my, my, my SQL cluster, I already have two replicas. So why have I to use three replicas in the cloud storage? For example, if we are running HDFS, um, let me see Ceph or GlassDFS. So if we configure the, the replica in HDFS is already three, why should I use three in Ceph? So, so our recommendation to them is uh, uh, do not use HDFS over cloud storage. Go into the Swift approach, for example. But if you must have to use that, then it goes to another trade-off. Uh, let's take Ceph for example. If you use only one replica in HDFS, you probably will not have locality. And uh, uh, we can leverage the Ceph to do the replication, the consistency work. But uh, if we um, only use one replica in Ceph, then we lose all the other things the cloud system, cloud storage system provided, like a consistency, rebalance, and uh, checksums, so, uh, et cetera. So this is another thing we, we could consider it when we, um, when we deploy um, big data in, in cloud, trying to figure out uh, uh, which type of uh, storage approach we, we, will, we will adopt. The five issue is cloud scaling. So it's pretty typical when you're running a cloud environment, you will change your uh, cluster size. You will, for example, add, add more nodes, add more a disk and add more servers in that cluster, but that kind of operation is almost uh, not um, acceptable if you are running big data in cloud. So why? Because, um, for example, you we have uh, provision a cluster for the big data services, and we want to add more nodes. So the cloud system they will do the data balancing, uh, re uh, rebalancing work. So that time probably will be longer than even you promote proposing a new cluster. So that, um, when we're doing this, um, we probably have to be cautious about the cluster size. I mean, we will have to um, figure out what's the best uh, class size we will do, uh, probably using some, um, left some headroom or spaces. So the, the other thing is, uh, um, Particularly, um, I mean, potentially in future, we can use the containers to reduce the, um, reduce the overhead because we can use containers to reduce the instant boot time. So maybe providing a cluster is much faster and uh, rebalancing the data is much faster. So the, the problem six is uh, um, resource configuration and monitoring. Um, OpenStack cannot monitor the resource used from Hadoop or Spark. So we know Sahara have some plan, um, blueprint to enhance this experience uh, uh, to add the monitoring features, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's not in there so far. So currently, basically speaking, there is no way you can, you can monitor the, the resource and the configuring the resource from the cloud when you're running big data in cloud. So, the, 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 the approach people are using today is still using the traditional big, big data workload like uh, uh, big, big data application like Yarn and Spark Web UI here to monitoring the resource for the big data workload. Um, the last one is talk about OpenStack vision control. So when you, it, it's, a, it's a common scenario that people are um, they probably using different version of the big data application. For example, um, they may need different uh, Spark cluster, different version of the software stack. But in OpenStack, the new version can only be supported in the latest uh, releases. So it's hard to leverage the new, those new features for the big data um, end users. So the possible solution uh, we shot about, there are two possible solutions. One is you port uh, 
new features back to the end, which I think not, no people will do that soon, or possibly time consuming and very difficult to do that. The second is that um, we can leverage OpenStack Caller and uh, to run OpenStack uh, services using container technology. So that's exactly what we are doing now. So uh, we'll see that uh, that can, can help on the OpenStack version control path. So these are all the seven problems and the possible solutions we have, um, we have encountered uh, we, with this uh, specific, specific customer. And here comes the summary. So we, we shared the customer pain points for the Sahara deployment in their cloud environment. And uh, we, we highlighted kind of the possible solutions. Um, so it's uh, definitely we need better big data support in the cloud. So we, we, uh, the call, call to action part with we address and upstream the solutions. So if, if we have any um, questions and uh, suggestions, we can send the email to the, the, the guy here. So this is a legal disclaimer. Um, so something in the slide may be changing in the future, and uh, I'm not the one to be blamed, you know. OK, so here come the question part. Any question? So if I cannot answer the question, I will go back to this guy and uh, make sure he can, he can provide the answer. Thank you for the presentation. Okay. I have a question about the storage performance. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the internal HDFS configuration is more, uh, uh, more uh, much provide that, that, it, that configuration provides a high performance compared to the Swift uh, uh, configuration. Do you have any uh, specific performance uh, uh, number? Uh, compared yeah. to the yes, we we do have the numbers, but it's um, it's in another slide. I will forward to you um, later. Mm -hmm. So we we have done some kind of a test with this with these uh, three different configuration, and uh, plus the previous um, virtual machine and bare metal performance. We have another report. It can be shared. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in a virtualized environment, uh, uh, what's your suggestions for the resource provision uh, scheme? Uh, more specifically, uh, how many VM instances do you run in a single host? Um, good question, but that I think depends on your hardware. If you are using a typical, for example, two uh, dual socket processor, which uh, may have 40 cores or even more, um, I, I, what I observe is people usually do one-to-one. -one. Um, they, they do not do any overcommitment. Hi. Oh, sorry. You have to go there. Oh, I forgot that. Can I hear you? Hi. Hi. Uh, for the network, uh, for the storage layer, mm -hmm. you uh, said uh, internal HDFS versus Swift. So what were you using for your client, and where did you see the performance things on uh, using the local storage uh, versus moving on the probably object storage, because that will have their own performance. Yo, you know, uh, mean on the local storage, do you mean the external HDFS solution? Internal HDFS. So uh, external HDFS have the highest, um, the better performance than Swift approach. That is basically because uh, when you run a bigger data workload, um, uh, when they do the iteration, rename is a typical operation. But in Swift, in the object storage, for the rename operation, you have to get that object uh, and uh, change it and uh, delete uh, oh, sorry, delete the previous object. So it's a different, uh, different type of uh, operation. But in previous HDFS, what you need to do is basically change the metadata, update the data. So, so that part um, is why, where why Swift performance is much lower than the external HDFS approach. I agree with that. What I'm saying, you said you suggested your client to use Swift, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I heard from you, that you suggested your clients to use Swift then 
uh, HDFS. You no. client using a Swift? No, in your use case, uh, what was the recommendation to use Swift or HDFS? Oh, or um, oh Issue number sorry, four. and get that. So it basically depends on whether you want to pro provide object storage or whether you have object storage. If you already have object storage and you have to load that uh, storage into your big data analytic for a cluster, so that, that in that case, possibly you will go to the Swift approach because you already have a object storage cluster running. And what about the replication factor? I mean, on the next one, issue number four, you were talking about <coughs> replication. Yeah, yes. uh, there is no, so we can only provide a se several recommendation. Um, it, but uh, to be frank, we, we don't have a best practice so far. So it, it looks like for most of the customers, they, stick to, they, they still want to stick to their own replication in the HDFS layer. So it's kind of a, um, a trade-off. So it, we, we have to see how we can handle that part. OK, okay thank you. Okay, uh, if no more questions, uh, thank you for joining.